Well, hello everybody. I'm Kai and I'm one of the partner development managers here at InvestIn. InvestIn works to bridge the gap between school and the workplace by providing school students like yourselves with an immersive experience of their dream career. Now we do this by giving students four key things, knowledge, experience, advantage, and their network. And so far we've had over 35,000 students join us since we were founded seven years ago. Now, part of my job is working with schools to encourage students like you to start thinking about your career or next steps and try to improve your chances of success for once you leave school. Now, whether you have a clear idea of what you want to do or whether you are only just starting to think about life beyond the school gates, I hope you'll find this short introduction useful. So this session will focus on today's job market and the skills you need to succeed. But why is it so important to build knowledge of this at such an early stage of your career? Well, the Confederation of British Industry did a survey last year that showed that nearly 50% of young people aged 17 to 23 feel unprepared for the world of work. So at this point, it's not important whether you know or not what it is you'd like to do. But what is important, however, is thinking about how you can start building your skill sets to improve your employability in the future, regardless of what industry you choose to go into as well as having a working knowledge of how the graduate jobs market is forever evolving. So with this in mind, when exactly does your career start? Does it start during your GCSEs, when you're getting a baseline of qualifications in a range of subjects? Does it start during your A-levels, when you're honing in on what subjects you're good at, enjoy, and will get you to where you need to go? Or does it not even start until university when you're studying the degree that will put you on a trajectory to where you need to be to get you that dream job? What about summer internships and that graduate job? Does it not even start until you're actually in the workplace and making your way up the career ladder? Well, the truth is your career has already started and everything you've been doing from your GCSEs all the way through to university and beyond is preparing you and giving you highly employable skills. And what you want to be doing now is identifying the skills you already have, understanding why they're important and what skills you still need to be gaining. And that is what we're gonna be talking about a little today. So with this in mind, you should be taking time during your studies to think how career ready am I? Now, one area you may be thinking about is your work experience, whether this is paid work or volunteer work. You may be thinking about establishing and deepening your network with connections and contacts in the industries you're interested in going into. You should be developing your commercial awareness and your knowledge of industry. You should really be working on interview practice and thinking a little bit about how your academic accomplishments and extracurriculars prepare you for the future job market. And these are all areas which you should consider when thinking about how career ready you are. So let's take a little bit of a look at today's job market. Now you'll probably all be aware that a lot has changed since your parents' generation when it comes to employment. Tech and automation in particular has been changing the way we work for a very long time. So this hardly comes as a surprise. But I think a lot of people worry about automation taking over certain industries and putting people out of jobs. While to some extent that may be true, a report by Deloitte highlighted that technology actually helped create 3.5 million new higher skilled jobs instead. So it's important to see technology as having a positive effect on the future of the job market. There are now jobs that just didn't exist a few years ago, and your dream job might only just be establishing itself as an industry right now. And tech has even shaped the way that we job hunt online rather than scouring the newspapers or how we can connect and work with people all over the world instantly, particularly now when remote working is so important. Skills relates very much to the developments in tech as well. So future businesses will need more skills, including digital know-how, creativity, entrepreneurship. And the beauty of today's job market is actually in how transferable all of these skills are, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Now the subject of your degree or your job title doesn't hold as much importance now as your skill sets do. And there's far more flexibility today for graduates to move across industries, across job roles, to apply their skill sets to different business models. Now, unfortunately, however, all of this comes together to make competition for entry level and graduate jobs extremely high. So many young people are graduating with top degrees from top universities, that a degree is not simply enough anymore. 
So here we have some information provided by the National Career Service about the job market in Buckinghamshire in the southeast. Now, the sectors with the most opening for employment within the region are in the areas of wholesale and retail, health and social care, science and technology, administration, and education. And interestingly, 15.3% of the workforce in the region are also self-employed. Now, pursuing self-employment is often assumed to involve careers such as the trade and construction industry, but this is not necessarily the case. More and more people are following their ambitions and starting their own businesses in whatever field this may be. Now, this takes a great deal of drive and determination, but the rewards can be profound with greater autonomy of your working patterns, your company's goals, and a significant stake in any success of your own business. But for those who follow regular employment, here are some of the largest employers in terms of corporations. You've got Coca-Cola, GE Healthcare, Pinewood, Arla, and Procter and & Gamble as well. Now, having looked specifically at your region, here we have a very clear and more general diagram of graduate vacancies in 2020, which highlights where the most graduate vacancies were by business sector. Now, you might be surprised to see that the public sector has so many more opportunities, particularly because many students often think of industries like law or banking as the most populous ones. But have a little study of this slide and keep these numbers in mind as we move on to the next one. Now, you can quite clearly see that the number of applicants per sector does not correlate with the number of available vacancies. And in fact, the public sector has considerably less applications than every other industry. So some young people that are just keen to get themselves that first job may want to apply for the public sector due to less competition. But obviously, we would always say to follow your passion. If you're keen to get into the legal or financial sectors, for example, then just go for it. But be aware that you're putting yourself up against a lot of competition. So these numbers aren't on screen to scare you away from your applications, but just to show you that you need to be standing out amongst the crowd. And in fact, there are on average 50 applications for each job, no matter the sector. So here are some more obvious examples for you. There are approximately 10 applications for every place at a medical school, approximately 40 applications for each training contract at a top law firm, and also approximately 250 applications for each place in an investment bank. So once you've had to think about what sector might be of interest to you, it's really worth having a think about how you're going to get there because this competition can be fierce. But what is it that employers are actually looking for? I'm sure you're all enthusiastic, got good grades, some work experience, and possibly the email address of a friend of a friend that you can get in touch with. But that's not necessarily all that it takes, and employers are looking for much more than that. So firstly, there's organisation and self-management. In the past, it was completely normal for new employees to only speak when spoken to and to work their way up a ladder before they can start making any real change. But today, the workplace is rapidly changing. It's no longer predictable. And that means that employers are looking for you guys to step in and find problems that need solutions. They want you to think outside the box, use your initiative, challenge and improve systems and processes. Now, there's creativity and critical thinking, which relates to commercial awareness which is an understanding of the commercial context of the business or industry you work in. Effective communication is critical because it's all well and good having these skills, but if you can't demonstrate them during the recruitment processes, then employers just simply won't know that you have them. It's unusual nowadays for job applications to only require a CV submission, and employers will use psychometric testing, video interviews, and assessment centers to select the best candidate. And there's a real science behind these processes and techniques to learn in order to stand out. And you must be able to effectively communicate yourself in this scenario. And finally, relational skills and collaboration. Robots are taking people's jobs to some extent. But the good news is, as we mentioned earlier, there's been a surge of importance placed on interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence. Robots and AI cannot replace empathy and psychology. So soft skills which are essential to areas like sales or customer service. Building relationships with people and communicating effectively and thoughtfully are hugely undervalued skill sets that nowadays are becoming increasingly important. So these are four particular skill areas that employers are looking for from young people like yourself.
Now here is just a list of some more skills and competencies that you should be aware of and start thinking about which one of these skills do I already have and which ones do I need to work on? Communication, time management, teamwork and leadership, for example. And it's important to think about examples from your school and extracurricular experience that reflect your skill set. And the key thing about soft skills is that they are often transferable across careers and industries. And as a result, you may find that you possess many of the required traits, even if you don't necessarily match the exact profile in the job description. So by focusing on your skills development and demonstration, you're able to increase your employability in a wide range of areas, as we can see here. Now we're often asked, how can we gain soft skills? And I guess I want to say that each one of you already has some form of soft skill, and it's just about thinking about how to frame answers related to that. Because these require no formal training and are usually picked up through previous positions or experiences at school or outside, you might already have some great attributes that you can use to your advantage. So looking at the job market, once we've thought a little bit about that competition and about the skills that you need in order to succeed, you should start to think about what's important to you. Why do you want to work in a particular industry? Why do you potentially enjoy your job? Why is a specific company for you? And ultimately, why do you get up in the morning to go to work? So to figure out which option is right for you, it's helpful to have a think about the aspects that are valuable to you. So for working environments, do you hate the idea of sitting at your desk every day? Or do you like routine? Do you want to travel or do something more hands-on, like in a lab or working with animals, for example? Is team size important to you? Would you like to work in a small growing team or in a large corporation at multiple locations? Is progression important to you? Would you like to fast track your way through like with many graduate schemes or work your way up like an entry level job? Job security is important. So traditionally jobs are much more secure in the public sector than they are in the private sector. Now, people at work would be lying if they told you that their salary wasn't important. So for some people, their salary, perks, and performance-based bonus is exactly what they go to work for. And they're willing to sacrifice other things such as their working environment and working hours perhaps for a greater salary. And working hours, there we are. So many jobs nowadays will offer more flexible working patterns. And if this is something that is particularly of interest for you, then you should look out for that in your application. Work culture is changing. So not all jobs now encourage people to dress up in suits and ties. Um, and people are uh, allowed to be a lot more casual than before. And finally, purpose. And this is the most important thing. What is it that makes you want to go to work? Is it a personal purpose, a social purpose? Do you want to help other people, for example? But it's about thinking about what it is that gets you out of bed to go to work. So finally, as I mentioned at the beginning, I work for a company called Investin. And we run immersive career experience programs designed to give students like yourselves a unique insight into your dream career. We run programs for 12 to 18 year olds in 20 different industries throughout the year that you can see on screen now. And all of our programs are led by leading professionals who will show you what working in that industry is really like through a series of simulations, case studies, seminars, and panel discussions. You'll also have the opportunity to network with and ask questions to a number of professionals and university advisors who can give you the advice you need to succeed. This summer, we've actually launched 10 live and online summer internships in the following industries, which is an opportunity for students like yourselves to gain summer work experience in your dream career from your own home. These programs will take place via an online interactive platform so all you need is a laptop or computer and access to the internet in order to participate so to register for any of our programs you just need to head to our website select the program you're interested in and hit register now and as you can see on the screen all students at Chalmers high school as one of our partner schools are eligible for a 10 percent discount on any registrations using the code Chalmers high 20. so you can see further details including detailed timetables on our website now and if you have any further questions you can either contact us directly or speak to your teachers. So thank you very much for listening today. I hope that that's been able to open your eyes a little bit more to the local and national job market and what it is you need to succeed. We wish you the best of luck with your career journey and hope to see some of you on our programs very soon.